Hello everyone, my name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. Today we're going to, uh, I guess it's a reaction, but I, I think we're going to be doing a lot more talking. And for those of you who are watching who are not divers and haven't been through dive training, this is probably going to be a little bit boring for you because we're going to be talking about standards, training standards. So James from Divers Ready is another channel for scuba diving, one of the you know popular channels for scuba diving. He recorded this video where he talks about how important standards are for training and how in his view, and again, I'm paraphrasing because I watched this when he came out a few weeks ago. In his view, he thinks agencies obscure their trainings to protect themselves or something like that. I want to watch it. I really watch it. Like I want to approach this as if I'd never, I've never watched it because I watched it a while ago. It was like a month ago they came out. So, uh, I want to get your opinion on it because I remember watching it and I'm like, I got to get Woody on a video and we can talk about it. Oh, I look forward to it. Let's do By it. By the way, I'm sporting Terry's organization. Oh, yeah, today. yeah. Scuba Girls Scuba International. Scuba Girls Shout International. Out. Thank you, Terry, for the shirt. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. As always, so great to see all of your smiling faces and thanks for choosing to spend your time with me. This is going to ruffle a lot of feathers. Today, we're going to be looking at course standards. What, what are they? Why do they matter? And how do you know if your instructor is following them? First, what do I mean by course standards? The course standards are the specific requirements and limitations applied by the scuba training agencies, which tell instructors what they can and cannot do whilst teaching a course. Every agency yep. offered course has its own set of standards. So for an example, let's look at an easy one from the SDI, that's the training agency, open water course regarding the swimming evaluation. It says the swimming evaluation must be completed prior to any scuba skills taught. A distant swim of 200 meters nonstop using any stroke without the use of mask, snorkel, or any swimming aids, or 300 meters non-stop yep. using mask, snorkel, and fins. B, a survival swim float of 10 minutes. Note if an exposure suit is worn for any of the above skills, the wearer must be neutrally buoyant at the surface. Okay, I'm, I waited him for it to finish. I, I, I want to pause this. Yeah. This swimming evaluation standard for SDI is pretty much the same one for SSI. It's pretty much the same one for Patty. Exactly. It's pretty much the same one for Raid. Why? Because everybody is basically taking their standards from world accepted standards. It starts with the WRSTC. It yep. then goes to a regional level, the RSTC. Yeah. And then the individual agencies. They, they model their standards to make sure they're following those general guidelines. Does that minimum, make sense? Minimum standards, yes. Yeah. So minimum. WRSTC, which you mentioned, stands for World Recreational Scuba Training Council, okay? And they basically say, look, in order for agency certifications to be to have reciprocity, meaning a, a dry, dry suit training or a certification from SSI will be accepted by a patty shop, you know, so cross agencies. In order for reciprocity to take place, we're going to create a baseline of standards that as long as the agencies follow, they will, can recognize each other. And I think it's a good yeah. idea. We're, we're going to do it with Dive Talk Academy, and here's why I think it's a good idea. This keeps us self-regulating. Otherwise, the government's going to come in and regulate us, right? right if we don't right. have our own minimum level of standards, the government's going to say, hey, you guys are being reckless. Nobody's yeah. monitoring this and people are getting hurt and we don't want them in. Okay. Yeah. And, and even a long though, pause, but it, last I think thing, it's important to, last set, thing up, really quick. to set up. Even though agencies are comp competing with each other, they are competitors, they all actually come together at the WRCC and RCC levels right. to craft the minimum standards that all of them are going to follow. Like the yeah. members of these agencies or the members of RSCC are people that are from the agencies. The agencies themselves come together at a round table and let's come up and agree with some standards. And I think it's a great, it's a great idea. Okay, let's do it. Well, that seems clear enough, easy to follow, right? How could this standard 
possibly be broken. Well, I have personally witnessed instructors not have their students swim the full distance. I've seen instructors allow their students to stop halfway when it clearly says it's a non-stop swim. I've seen instructors allow students to rest at the pool's edge during the float, and I've known instructors to completely omit the swim evaluation altogether. And yet this is the simplest skill for the instructor. You don't, they don't have to do anything. You're not teaching people to swim, you're checking that they can swim before you teach them to dive. You're just watching somebody swim. Why would an instructor break this standard? Well, I can only think of two reasons. Number one, laziness, or number two, time constraints. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't those two reasons apply to you, James, as the person who witnessed a violation of the standards from reporting those violations up the chain? I think so. I mean, it depends on his role. Some dive shops and agents, some agency require what they call a monitor. Right. A, a person that is sort of the head of that dive shop's overall instruction. And if they aren't following standards, they have meetings, they have remediation processes. Of course. If they get reported, sometimes it's just additional education on the first offense. But we have said this over and over. It's not about the agency. Mm -mm. Pick a good instructor. That's right. Now, how do you pick a good instructor? Well, their reputation. Go meet them. Go ask other students. Yeah. So anybody can cheat. But what I'm saying is, if you make a video about why standards are important, and you then witness someone break them and do nothing about it, aren't you kind of part of the problem? I'm not going to make a comment on that because I don't know what he did or didn't do. For okay. all I know, the, he did I've, He did make a report. I'm sure I'm sure you have done this before, but I've noticed other instructors do stuff that might not be breaking standards. Maybe it is breaking standards, but it's like kind of nonsensical, like teaching people that are out of air, but leaving the air open and telling them they can breathe, stuff like that. That I, I then approach with the instructors themselves, not with the monitor, and say, you know, can you help me understand how can you teach somebody an out-of-air skill without making them feel they're even out of air. Like, please explain to me, right? Um, and I feel like that is part of your personal relationship with the instructor too, where you're not, you may not go up the chain of command involving the monitor and everyone else, but like, let me go to the instructor directly and have a conversation because that doesn't make any sense to me. And I think that's a good approach because it could have been an accident. Right. It's, it's not always that they're intentionally breaking standards. But that standard is in place for a very good reason, of course, to become a scuba diver, you need to prove that you know how to swim. It makes sense. 200 meters is a reasonable ask. Mm -hmm. When you come and take a dive course with me, the first two parts of the training are exactly the same, regardless of which course we're doing. The first thing you're going to do is fill out your paperwork, your medical declaration, and your assumption of risk liability release form. The second thing we're going to do is go line by line through the course standards awesome. for the course that you've bought That's and good. if any of my students are watching this please confirm that that is in fact fact in the comment section down below just be like yeah i took this course with james true story he went through the standards i do this for a few very good reasons first i want to set expectations i want the students to know exactly what they need to do in order to pass the course and receive certification that way at the end of the course if a student hasn't met the requirements or is not up to the performance standards, I never have to have an awkward, sorry you didn't pass conversation. It's not a surprise for the student because the student already knows they didn't pass because I set the expectations on day one. But the challenge I have with that is that a lot of the skills are up to the, to the, to the opinion of the instructor right? Because the standards say you need to show mastery of the skill, right? Meaning you're doing this and you're not startled. You're not losing it, right? Like, I don't know, feeling your, like flooding your mask and clearing it, right? Something like that. You pick a skill, you need to show mastery of it. So even though the standard says you need to show mastery, the person who can say that you actually have mastery is the instructor. So the standards don't necessarily tell you if you pass or fail, it's still up to the instructor to some degree, at least in a lot of the skills. Yep, it is. Right. It gets back to picking a good instructor, doesn't it? What is the definition of a good instructor? That's so wide open subjective. I would say it's one that 
cares about the standards and makes sure their student can do these skills because these skills are for the most part, almost all of the skills are yeah. emergency related or a problem related. Only a few of them are just basic things you need to do, like breathe underwater, or you may need to add a little water in your mask to clear it. Yeah. Most of them are for emergency. So short shorting this is is risking your safety in the event of an emergency. So you I know, don't the, see why you would do that. The other thing that I that I also think about is the standard says that if the student shows you they can do a skill, you can move on and you know to the next skill and so on. And for the most part, scuba diving is set up in a way where you kind of crawl before you walk before you run, right? So like take the regulator out of your mouth, then lose the regulator, then you know it just keeps on building uh, on and on and on. But you know one of the things I used to do when I used to teach because I don't teach anymore, I retire from instructing. <laughs> but one of the things I used to do is that. I used to tell my students, look, even if you show it to me at like instructor level, don't be mad if I ask you to do it again. And the reason for that is I believe in mastering through repetition. And I always give him the example of martial arts. Com I used to train comfort through repetition. Yeah, I used to train jujitsu. And imagine if in jujitsu or karate or take you pick whatever martial art. Imagine if they teach you how to do a kick and you do one that looks good and then they're like, that's it. You don't have to do it anymore. We're going to move to the next kick. No, they're going to be like, now you do it a thousand times. And then tomorrow we do it a thousand yeah. times again. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And, right? and in my classes, I, I have taught a lot. I would do it where I would just come up to them while they're moving naturally. Not this sit on the bottom and wait. Just you're swimming around. I'm going to be like, you take your mask off. You throw your regular. Just yep. on the spot. And it's natural. The it's standards actually, don't ask for that, but you're actually, doing it because you're a good instructor. It's actually yeah. how they're diving, though. They're moving, and all of a sudden something happens. It's not this stop, you know, on the bottom type right. of a thing, because that's just not reality of scuba diving. Correct. Also, going through the agency standards helps set the limits for training. I tell open water students the limit for this level of training is 18 meters or 60 feet. So no, we won't be going to the Spiegel Grove on your open water course because the very top of that wreck is 20 meters or 66 feet. And no, we can't hover above it at 18 meters or 60 feet because there's usually strong current. That's Only true. an idiotic yeah. instructor would take open water students to the Spiegel Grove. Lastly, perhaps Works. most importantly, That's true. I go through the course standards with my students because it creates transparency. Not only do I show my students the course standards, I also show them where they can find them for their future reference. As an instructor, this is a really easy way for me to assure my students that I am doing a thorough job with their training. This is the course you have paid me money to teach you. This is what you are paying me for. These are the limits I am not allowed to exceed. It allows my students to hold me as their instructor accountable for their training. But beyond that, I think one good thing that this does, so I commend him for doing that. This is a good thing that you teach the students where to find the standards. Standards change too, right? Once in a while they get updated, something gets added. I remember when they changed like the ascent rate, right? They went from like 30 to or 20 feet per, or what is it, 40 to 30 or whatever. They started changing standards. So it's good for divers, students, et cetera, to know where the standards are. They can always go back and check because they do get updated from time to time. Yeah, I, I will say that Everybody does this a little bit differently. Some people put it together in a more user-friendly PowerPoint type of academic presentation that they may do a little bit each day before they go in the confined water. They are going over the standards, but they're doing it in a not just reading the black and white of the standard, right? They're talking about it right. and applying it in a nice presentation, but by the time you go through that whole presentation, it probably went through all the standards. So yep. I think it's important. I, I like what he's saying. Yeah. Now, think about the last scuba course that you took and ask yourself, how can you be sure that you received the full training you paid for? How do you know as the student if your instructor cut any corners or skipped any skills? Or I will say I've never seen a course where the student and the instructor didn't have to sign off on all the skills at the end. We're going to talk about that. There's I a think. paper 
or now it's digital, you have to sign it. The instructor says, you did this. You have to sign it as well. I've, I've never taught one where you didn't have to do that. Uh, that's true. And the certification, oh, sorry. the certification will not be issued until that's done, even if Absolutely. it's on paper, right? That's a part because of I remember feeling the paperwork sure. and then the controller or whoever it is will go through it, make sure everything is signed, every checkbox is checked, not the instructor, someone else within the shop will do this. And then once that all has been confirmed, then the certification is issued. Yes. Yeah. That's a, pretty much a standard procedure for right. anywhere I've seen. So that answers the question. Standards How do you know? In any way. That's the answer is you won't unless you know what the official standards are for that course. Okay, James. Point made, put the hammer down. So where do I, student diver, find these standards of which you speak? Hmm. It's fair that I have a bad reputation for shitting on the training agencies. It's true that I think that they think that they are actually more important than they really are to our sport. A training agency is just selling books and e-courses. That's it. That's their main revenue stream. Let, let, let That's their the job. Sound. Bookseller, not dive instructor. But in order to be an instructor and pay training agencies, any of the training agencies, for the privilege of selling their poor quality, dated, spelling and grammar mistake ridden tomes, you have to agree to adhere to the minimum standards for each course, which the WRSTC, World Recreational Scuba Training Council, have all agreed upon. Mm -hmm. The WRSTC being comprised of the major international training agencies' executives. So for the most part, Course standards are purchased by the instructors when they do their instructor training. When I became an instructor, I completed a PADI instructor exam. Part of that process is a written exam on standards, so you have to study them in detail. And after I passed that, I could log into the PADI instructor portal, the secret closet of PADI standards, and review course standards so I knew what I had to teach. That's in making right. this video, I, I asked myself, wow. well, if I was a potential open water student shopping around for training, where can I review the course standards for an open water course from, let's say, the top three training agencies? Not the marketing material, not the course outline, the actual instructor's standards. So I went looking. All right, let's start with the biggest, which is, of course, Paddy. Paddy, long story short, Forget about it. It seems they remain a closely guarded secret. I can't find the Paddy Open Water Standards anywhere in their public domain. Of course, it's the internet, it's Google. You can find them leaked by other people, but on Paddy's website itself, I cannot find the standards anywhere. The best I could do was find a vague FAQ. So I emailed customer service from Paddy from a fake email address, because let's be honest, they probably have my real email address blocked already. Uh, and I have yet to receive a response at time of recording this video. If I do get a response, I will copy paste it and pin it to the comment section of this video. So check back down there. Mm -hmm. SSI was a little more encouraging before ultimately being rubbish. Uh, there was a view standards button on their open water diver course page, but unfortunately that opened a pop-up box, uh, which went to a login box where you have to create an account, then create a profile, and then they email you, and you have to guarantee that's your email and confirm. And then eventually you land on a profile page that they've created for you on their home portal page, where you can view the standards for free diving and fucking mermaid diver course, but no open water diver course. So I went back to the open water page, and it turns out you actually have to buy the course first to be able to view the standards. Okay. I don't know if that's true. Um, I, I just want to pause here for a second. Do you think, I guess I'm talking to him, I'm talking mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. And, I, and I'm asking the question because I'm. it's making me think. Do you think a training agency has a right to be a for-profit organization to make money and then they will release their information. I, I, I just want to put it in perspective. I believe it's healthy for the dive industry for training agencies to be profitable. So what I'm getting at is why, why do they need to put out their overall detailed standards? They do, what, he, what he's skipping here is they do put a general description in a marketing type of format of right. 
open water diver. It's going to qualify you to be the following. I think yeah. some there may be a general description of the course, right? It's general. And I don't know if it's such a bad thing for them to then say, you want the rest of the information, sign up for the course. Yeah. Why is that a bad thing? No, I think I, okay, so playing devil's advocate, I think people would say because I should be able to review the standards and agree with them before I pay and sign up to become a diver under that agency. But I think the, the argument goes beyond that because number one, let's say the standards are like you go to patty.com and the standards pop up in PDF. Okay, cool. The standards are meaningless if your instructor is terrible. All right, you can have the best standards in the world, and if you say, "Wow, these standards are impressive," I'm gonna sign sign up for the nearest Patty school. Your class can be a disaster. Still, the standards don't really make a huge difference when it comes to the qual the, a huge difference when it comes to the quality of instruction and how much you're gonna learn. Right, the instructor is what makes a different difference for SSI specifically. You can go to SSI.com or I think it's MyDiveSSI.com, whatever the URL is, slash standards, and all the standards are there. You don't have to sign up, get a free account, pay for a course, none of that stuff. They're freely available. They're not the only ones to do this. SDI does this. Uh, GUE does this. Like a lot of agencies publish and we, their standards. And we do. Dive we, Talk Academy. We absolutely our new give you our standards up right. front. There's no nothing problem. to hide. But regardless of the agency that you pick, Having standards you agree with, which as a non-diver, I have no idea how you're how you're gonna agree with them because you have no diving now, knowledge whatsoever. Point. Now you're yes. How you that don't know anything about diving except watching dive talk, right? Are going to read this jargon that was written by lawyers in a lot of cases and be like, yeah, you know what? That's a good move. I'm glad that's in the standards. Not what? And it could be misinterpreted. You you could read those things. And say, you know, I don't even think I need a class. This <laughs> right. really could go the other way. Now I do remember actually talking about this at times with some of these agencies. That could be you their approach. We don't want to make it for free because then people don't take the class because they think it. they know how to my dive. My buddy, fine, he's going to show me how to remove my regulator and clear my mask. I can do that. And I can swim 200 air. meters. Uh, th Easy. I'm not paying all this money for those things. Right. You know what I mean? So... It could be. Is it a good thing? I'm Do we agree with it? No, I'm, exactly. We, it, right now, when people message us, yeah. hey, I want to know about the Dive Talk Go. I give them the manual and the standards. And not only that, all the skill sign-offs. Yeah. Get, here's everything. Why not? There's right? no secrets. So I, but I'm just thinking out loud. And, why you know, would an agency, conversation. Why would an agency make it difficult to find the standards? I don't know. I, I wouldn't. But I don't, I don't necessarily think that in the grand scheme of things, meaning I don't know how to dive, I want to learn how to dive, get certified how to dive, having access to the standards before I take my class, I just don't know how much of a difference that makes. And that's my problem with this video so far is that I feel like there's been, we're making a bigger deal out of a non-issue. Like I struggle, I'm sure you can you know, relate to this. I struggle to get students to go through the class, which is full of pictures and cool videos. They don't do that. They don't go through the class. And well, you're going to tell me. Well, with ours, they're going to have to because right. it doesn't open the next module. Right. But the point is, on their SSI, whatever, these agencies, you struggle to get people to take the class. And you're going to sit here and say, like, well, you know, students want to read through hundreds of pages worth of st standard and text. Really? Who's student? Which one? There's always obviously some studs that show up and took all the class, pass all the tests, read all the standards. Yes, those people exist. And if you're watching this, you're probably one of them, one of those students. But the vast majority of students show up and it's like, oh, yeah, I started it and then I stopped and I forgot. So, yeah, I, look, I used to be a little harsh on the agencies as well. Let me just tell you where I have a problem with the agencies. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with the agencies education materials, putting out standards. I have a problem where the agencies start doing things that are not related to being a trading agency and they start stepping on the toes of dive shops and instructors that are needing to make money also. Right. For example, they start doing travel. Yeah. Right. They start doing, they start selling gear. 
there's got to be a separation. But for the most part, the training agencies are are good. They really are. It doesn't matter. That's how people learn how to dive. You know what? They they bring the world, most of the world they bring into diving. We would not have the, had the opportunity to move all the way up. Trimix, rebreather, cave divers. You got to start SSI. You know, yeah. these these recreational agencies are how people get into diving. So that view standards button was basically a, a lie. I know we said a lot. Basically, I'd have to commit to SSI, purchase their course no, you don't. before I can see what I'm buying. Nope. Uh, I'm not an idiot. I want to see the candy before I'll get in the van. I'm not falling for that again. Rubbish. No, and then SDI, available. the agency whose books I currently sell to my students. Credit where credit's due. In this simple exercise, SDI has it perfect. As you can see here, I have not logged in. You navigate to the page for the course you're interested in. Great. In this case, open water. You scroll down. There is a link called Standards and Procedures. You click. A PDF opens and hey presto, the actual course standards that your instructor has to deliver yeah. to you. The exact same standards in their instructor manual. Well done, SDI. Yep. Excellent job. That's really, good. that's how it should be across the board. In a future video, I'm planning to decipher the wishy-washy legally standards are written in that ensures that training agencies have absolutely no liability whatsoever and that the entire responsibility is placed on the instructor's shoulders. So subscribe if you haven't because you're not going to want to miss that one. Well, this is going to open up a gigantic can of worms. Are you ready for me to... Let's do it. Should... The training agencies providing educational materials that an instructor signed a document, a contract actually, with the training agencies telling the training agency, I'm going to follow, you gave me the privilege to allow me to teach under your materials and standards. Right. I agree. Gus? Yes. Thank you for giving me Gus Academy. I promise you I'm going to do that. Should you be liable if I don't follow your standards? I'm asking that que you a question now. No. Should you? No. No. So I don't think you should be. If I don't, you, you, you're going to look at me and say, Woody. Well, you, okay. You Hold on. Because a, I said no too fast. You're going to say, Woody, you literally signed my contract that right. said i will follow i gave you a course woody yeah i gave you an instructor exam where you had to prove you're going to do yeah. all of these things by the standards and then you don't no i get it but I, i'm just saying where is the liability i i get it i think there are some agencies where as an instructor you can either self-certify that you possess some skills or like Pretend that you can teach people how to night dive. Pretend that, like we've seen it. We know people that have never done search and recovery and they're search and recovery instructors, right? So some agencies will make it so easy. Self-certifying stuff. Self it's I don't like complete that. garbage. It is. So if you have procedures in place that allows any idiot to claim they're an expert in search and recovery, and they're teaching somebody out there and that person gets caught up in something and dies, you should be held liable. Okay, that's a valid, that's a really good point. Yeah. I, I forgot about the old self-certified. And the funny thing is when you then see the self-certified. Oh my God, and they're they bragging have, about they've, it. They've, they've, they've never done a search and recovery. You, I just want you to understand. Yeah. A real search and recovery. They've never done it. And they're instructors. Now, we saw... Remember when I went out to that lake and we raised that sailboat? Yeah. Do you know how hard it is to do search and recovery? <laughs> it's insane. It's a commercial thing. Yeah, no, it's it's anyway, a, it's hard point, work. Gus. Good but that's point. what I'm saying. I yeah, think it all really depends it all depends on on the situation, okay. right? Um on on what it is. The video is over. Um but um it, it's it's tough in this case. You know, I I feel again we're making a bigger deal out of standards being available publicly than what really is. And the name of the game is selecting the right instructor. Definitely. And I think that one thing that instructors lack, a lot of people like the people that self-certify, right, lack, is knowing that there's limit. Like you have limits and that you should be your, your greatest critic. I think that, you know, now with Dive Talk Academy is our, our new agency, you and I own the agency. We could be 
instructor trainers trainers in cave diving cave exploring instructor if we want to because we can give ourselves any titles that we want and we don't no way we don't I'm we not, are not i don't i'm not i'm not even an instructor trainer in dive talk academy on the dive talk go right product, i'm not the, even an instructor the, the product <laughs> are we that we own the product yeah we own the agency right no, i'm no, not i'm not there I'm, are better but we're not going to no leverage way. but that that's i think where the abuse comes from these instructors we're not going to leverage our power as agency owners no way. to just bestow upon ourselves all these titles and pretend skills it doesn't it's meaningless to me your you know 25 different capabilities of certifications you can teach if you don't do it for real they're meaningless to me and do it a lot absolutely you know what i th i really do feel like i i'm not teaching right now anymore i don't have the time and i also don't i i feel like i i haven't been teaching regularly i don't want to teach now because I need a refresher. You need to yeah. be current in this stuff, man. Yeah. It goes away fast. So I but think this was very interesting. I, We're going to get a I slew like, of comments. I like the fact that you mentioned the video where you had to bring in a sailboat because I still feel like you think you helped. Like you actually – were an asset to the yeah, team. I, at that time, I was. And that it was thanks to you that this boat was recovered. Well, not totally thanks to me, but... From the bottom of the lake. You be the judge. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to leave it right here. I, I'm on the fence on this one. I'm I think they're pretty happy I was there. We'll see. Bye, everybody.